Uh, I'm recording. Sure. Yep, I just started recording. Okay, because usually it says this meeting is being recorded, but I didn't hear that. So, okay. Uh, quorum being present, time being 610, I will call the meeting of the Freetown Conservation Commission to order. Uh, before we get started, I will read the governor's order. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 order, extending the March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people who may gather in one place. This meeting of the Free Freetown Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent like possible. That. Specific information, general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public can be found on the Town of Freetown website, freetownma.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website or YouTube channel an audio or video recording transcript of the comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Okay, so we have a couple of items that have asked for continuances. Both of those are notices of intent. They would be items number three and items number four. Chairman McCall is uh, back to order. And just for clarification, Victoria, item number three is a continuation of a notice of intent. We had already opened this up once. Yes. Thank you. So items three and number four are notices of intent. I will call back to order. Item number three is a notice of intent for 92 Narrows Road. That's the construction of a new dock and proposed boat ramp. They are currently uh, in uh, peer review and trying to come into DEP compliance um, with that. As we suspected, there may be some difficulties, uh, particularly with the bolt ramp uh, that they need to overcome. Uh, and then the other one is item number four. That's a continued notice of intent. That's for zero Locust Street and zero George D. Williams lot. This is uh, the scope of work is a proposed solar array uh, we receive, if you remember at our last meeting, we asked them to provide us with a check, receive the check. I don't know if it's yesterday or we've got confirmation that the check is coming and is off to peer review now. They've both asked for continuances. Our next meeting, uh, Victoria, would be the 25th. Yes, that's correct. That's not a holiday. So uh, on, on both of those uh, notice of intent, I will uh, entertain a motion that we continue both of those public hearings for 92 Narrows Road and for the Zero Locust Street and Zero George D. Williams lot to April 25th, six o'clock via Zoom. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Motion being supported. There's no further discussion on the motion. Hearing none, uh, roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. <coughs> Charlie Sullivan, aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Keith Mello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French says aye, and Kevin DeMaris aye. Motion passes union. We'll see them on the uh... next on our agenda. We have a request for determination, and we're back up to number one. A request for determination of applicability. This is for a 201 County Road, formerly 245 County Road. The applicant owner is BLK, BLK Realty LLC. Scope of work is demo an old building, remove dead trees, construction of new building, and grading. Uh, this was uh, a site that Margaret had pointed out, and thanks again, Margaret, uh, that there may be some work over there that was done within the, uh, a buffer zone to a wetland. Um, I went and spoke to the owners of the property, and um, as happens every now and again, uh, the owners went down, spoke with inspectional services, if you will, spoke to the building department, said that they were all set. They got all their permits to knock it down. They got their permits to build a new building. Uh, spoke to the Board of Health agent, uh, the, the part-time. Uh, again, this is prior, I think, to even me coming on board. Uh, and there's no well and there's no septic. So was told you don't have any issues with us. Uh, unfortunately for demos and additions, pool permits and all, those don't suffer the same review from conservation that um, <clears throat> that um, 
excuse me, that additions, new home construction, new septics and septic repairs do. So I've asked the uh, building department that on any new building permit for things like that, uh, it would be helpful uh, to have somebody from CONCOM, whether it be staff or a member, look at it so that we can avoid these after the fact deals. Um, so I don't know if uh, anybody uh, from BLK Realty is actually here tonight. Can't uh, I am here. Oh, is that uh, Nancy? I, yeah, this is Nancy. Hi, Nancy. And, and Blaine is here too. Okay, great. Welcome both of you. Okay, so uh, you. for those that are following along uh, on the town's website, freetownma.gov, uh, you can go to where it says boards and committees. You can then uh, click on the conservation commission. And then on the left hand side, you will see current conservation commission filings. If you would like to follow along with those, uh, I, I believe the members have, if they didn't receive it via email, they could certainly follow along uh, on the, um, on the website. So uh, now that you're here, Nancy, why don't you just give us a little bit of uh, an idea of what you're looking to do over there? Well, we we were asked by the town to take down the old building, which mm -hmm. was in fact an eyesore. So when we uh, decided to go ahead with this project, uh, again, as you reiterated, we were told that we didn't have to have any special permit because there was no water and no septic. This will simply be a storage building. So we moved forward with it and obtained the building permit. And I don't think anyone did anything intentionally wrong in the building department. I think there was just a misunderstanding. So in order to yeah. fit the, the size of the building, uh, we had to take down some trees that were old trees and they were, they were a hazard. They, they are going to be a hazard uh, because they were dead and dying and old trees. Uh, which I believe uh, Mr. Brightman sent you a letter to that. That's correct. So let me just give another. So what had happened was, and, and you're right, Nancy, that was a vital part there, I think. The town had asked you folks to remove it for a couple of reasons. It may be an eyesore or an attractive nuisance, whatever it is. And, and the site looks 100% better now. And I think everybody appreciates it getting cleaned up. Uh, and in typical fashion, uh, we've asked that, in, in, in instances where trees have been taken down without proper permitting that we ask that the arborist that did the work, if they could at least give us a, an idea of what the trees were uh, and, and if they were diseased and dying or if they were a danger. And, and I think in, in this instance too, some of the tree locations prevented uh, access to safely take down the building. Um, and so uh, I think uh, we did, I don't, I shouldn't say I think we did receive that that letter, uh, Margaret. I think you actually read it also, correct? Yes, I did. And is it is it? And you can you can verify that it is saying what I said it said. Yes, that they were diseased trees. That there were trees in the way of the actual demolition, etc. Okay, thank you. And so, um, obviously, so the got size of the building. It, 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 I'm sorry, the size of the building that we had originally requested, we thought would fit within the parameters of that footprint. Mm -hmm. But uh, after the actual demo and the trees down, we determined that that width of that building would not fit. Okay. So we've kind of backtracked a little bit um, and, and that's when you, we were even doing that when you came to talk to us, Kevin. Correct. Uh, so we had realized that the width of that building would not be feasible. So now, and of course, we're going forward with doing whatever it is that we need to do uh, to to construct a storage building on that site. Yep. And that's and that's kind of where that's kind of where we are in the process, right? And no, and, mm -hmm. and I appreciate you pointing out that you don't believe anybody down in the town hall did anything, uh, you know, obviously on purpose. And I think it's, 
it's part and parcel. We don't have a conservation agent. So on the one hand, we don't want people sitting around to wait for a meeting every two weeks just to be told, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Go ahead. But sometimes right. little, little things like this fall through the cracks, so to speak. And now our job is just to make it right and get you into compliance, which you've stated since I walked into your office that you want, I mean, you opened up your folder, you showed off the permits. And so, so I, I don't believe for a second that anything was done with malicious intent or the thought that somehow you could get away with it on, you know, and not have to do it. Certainly on County Road where everyone and their uncle can see it. <laughs> right. So uh, absolutely. Right, right, right. So what we're tasked with now, and again, folks can go on the website and see it. And we have been provided a plan uh, that shows the basic footprint. Uh, the wetland delineation is there, affirmed by our GIS mapping. Uh, and the, the, the only answer, so, uh, and again, just so to speak, is the, in looking at your application, Nancy, this is a pole barn, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, so again, we're not even going to be excavating deep for a foundation. It, uh, Correct. There's no well, no septic. It's basically no. reusing a commercial property uh, for com for a, a lighter commercial purpose, if you will. Uh, we're not the Correct. zoning, so it, that's of no consequence to us. So, I think at the end of the day, uh, um, you know, I don't take exception to this, uh, but. Um, the only outstanding item I think is uh, there's an abandoned well, is that correct on the property? That is. Okay, and that's been abandoned, it's been filled in or is it? Not at this point, we have stopped. Right, doing but you're not anything. gonna use, you're not gonna use the well, right? Like you say, there's no, right. Correct. So that's fine. So the concern, the concern would be uh, now siltation control. And I think we talked a little bit about it when, when I visited you that, you know, whether yeah. that's, silt sock or with filter fabric or it's mm -hmm. uh you know uh, silt fence or however right um sure. so that's going to need to be put out there mm -hmm. and um because you'll still have some disturbance right depending on what you're going to do you may just grind down the stumps which is fine too um you may end up having to remove a couple of stumps just because of their location relative to the pole barn so uh, Correct. So that, yeah. that affords a further protection. Um, does anybody from the board have any questions, comments, or concerns about this project? No. So I, I is, appreciate, oh, can I just ask one quick question? Um, I kind of lost it at one point. So are you building a smaller barn or storage? than you plan to, or are you planning on building bigger than the existing footprint? We have gone to a narrower width and a longer length. Oh, it's outside the original footprint, but it's not, if I'm not mistaken, you were gonna go for like a 60 foot deep, like a 60 by 100 one? building, if I'm not mistaken. The original one or the, the new one? The original one. The original one was 40 uh, width and 60 length. Okay. All right. Now we've gone yeah. to 30 width and 135 on the length. Got it. Got it. So it's, we're not, so it keeps that 50 foot setback from the, from the front property line. And then, like I said, uh, You've got about a hundred foot difference there, and you showed that. So that the fifty plus the thirty that get so that leaves us well, it's one hundred five actually. So that leaves us with our twenty five foot offset from the wetland. Correct. Which is what we try to ask people, uh, and we allow them to do that. But that's a good question, Margaret. Thank you. Um, anything else from the board? Okay. Uh, again, sorry we had to meet under the circumstances that we did, uh, but I appreciate you uh, listening to me and um, I appreciate you getting right away, coming down and, and, and working this out with us. So I thank you. Uh, that, being said, that being said, I will entertain a motion that we issue a negative determination number three. While the work is in a buffer zone to an area subject to protection of the act, it will not dredge, alter or fill said area. So the filing of a notice of intent is not required with the condition 
that the um, silt fence and erosion control be placed uh, at the top of bank in a, in a manner that will be safe during construction, but would also oh, prohibit and protect the environment and prohibit uh, stuff uh, flowing into the, the wetland. I mean, it's pitched kind of back towards the road a little bit anyway, but um, but anyway, so I'll entertain that motion. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Need a second. I'll second it. Thank you. Motion made supported. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Uh, roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Uh, Keith Mello. Aye. Hello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. Kevin Damaris, aye. Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you again, Nancy. Just give us a few days. We'll get that paperwork done and, and, and sent out to you. That'll be fine. Thank you very much. You're thank welcome. you to Have everyone. Great... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a great night. You too. Okay. Item number two, we have a continued notice of intent. This is for 43 Water Street. I will call that public hearing back to order. This is for an application for construction and installation of a 95 foot long fixed dock with associated gangway and float system in FEMA flood zone AE. The applicant also proposes to eradicate the existing phragmites on the property. Uh, the representative Steve Gioso from SciTech, the applicant owner is Deborah Petty. Uh, okay, we have Steve Gioso here because I heard him earlier. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so again, folks, this is a public hearing. Uh, you can follow along on our website under Conservation Commission current filings. Uh, you'll see it's 43 Water Street. We're going to be using the most revised, uh, recent revised plans, and that is a plan date of April 11th, and that's today. So, uh, Steve, I understand that, that this has gone through a, a bit of a peer review process, uh, and I also understand that according to... Uh, conversations with EPG and they are uh, satisfied with uh, your answers and responses. And it looks like you took care of the outstanding item with the revision on the plans. Would you care to speak a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, for the record, Steve Gioso with SciTech, Civil and Environmental Consultants and representing Debbie Petty. Um, yes, the chairman is correct. We've had two peer reviews uh, by environmental partners. The second most recent one, was issued a week ago. And essentially they confirmed that we had addressed their um, concerns relative to uh, the Phragmites eradication details and some of the dock related uh, questions in terms of uh, minimizing impacts on the resource areas. And also clarified a few points of uh, resource area identification on the property. So we did provide them um, a couple of weeks ago, the revised plan, they did respond. They um, did ask that we bolster our Phragmites eradication notes and just add a little bit more detail to a number of the notes. And um, as the chairman indicated, we have taken word for word the recommendations of environmental partners and added them into the notes section on the first plan of the plan set. Um, so that was really the last remaining item. Uh, they made mention that obviously we have to go to following this process, uh, chapter 91 review and some additional permitting before this project is officially approved for construction. And we acknowledge that we know that we have to go through that, but this is obviously the, the first step in that permitting process that we're obligated to go through. So um, it seems like we've addressed the concerns and I'm here tonight to either answer any additional questions or um, give you any more detail that you might want at this point, but the, the, the last comments on the Phragmites notes had to do with just providing a little more detail on you know, the cutting um, limitations on fertilizers after the cutting protocol had occurred and um, uh, just some details on the actual cutting process, which uh, they had suggested and we agreed uh, were appropriate to incorporate in the overall plan. Well, I appreciate that, Steve. It worked out the way it, we like it to work out, right? Yep. Uh, uh, get everybody on board with our peer review and typically things go. So 
when you said you wrote down word for word what they said to do, well, that that should satisfy them, I would imagine. Um, and I did read the the. Anybody from the public have any questions about this? Relatively straightforward. Craig um, Mighty's honest to God is going to be the most difficult thing about this project. Without a doubt. You know, when all when all is said and done, trying to eradicate an invasive weed, uh, that that's a difficult. So again, kudos to you and, and thank you for uh, trying to help out the environment that way. Um, okay. Anybody from the board have any comments or questions? No, oh, okay. Then I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. President I'll make that motion. Thousands of civilians have likely been killed there. Satellite image. Need a second. I I'll second it. Thank you. Motions made and supported. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Aye. Keith Mello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. Kevin DeMaris, aye. Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. That's to close the public hearing. You want us to vote to approve or not? That oh, that would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> the client might appreciate that more. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's interesting, right? So because we've you had to file it. And there was no, and we didn't receive anything relative to uh, time of year uh, restrictions. It's interesting. That's correct. Uh, uh, there is there is a restriction to do a, a nesting analysis, so that well, is in there uh, for right, the Phragmites so eradication. That's kind of where I was going with this, right? If we can start doing this, and I don't think there's any usable place for the Diamondback Terrapins to actually utilize for the, but. Um, in, in, in my opinion, I think that that's a daily inspection. Uh, do you anticipate that this is going to start construction anytime before July 1st? Um, I would say the answer to that is probably no. Um, okay. only because I think that, you know, I'll have to talk to the client. She'll probably begin the Phragmites eradication when it's appropriate, but the dock is obviously quite a ways off yet still. All right. So, and the reason why I say that is do not have a strong herring run there any longer. And that might be why we didn't get a comment relative to that. Uh, I know in some instances there has been time of, of year. Uh, the herring run is typically over around here by May. Uh, and then uh, better part of the end of May and, and first couple, three weeks of June is um, when the diamondback terrapins are nesting and laying their eggs uh, in that area. Like I said, I don't think that there's any uh, area conducive to that over there, but I think we should be mindful of that. So uh, I think at the end of the day, it would probably be a good deal to uh, do a time of year restriction relative to the construction of the dock till after July 1st. Um, I would say between the months of, of March, April, May, and June, no dock construction should be done. Okay. Uh, are you amenable to that? Absolutely. Does anybody from that, the board have any comments or questions about this? I've gone through two peer reviews already. I can only imagine. Uh, okay. I'm good with it, Kevin. Okay, great. So uh, then what I'll do is I'll entertain a motion that we approve the most recent revised plan set dated April 11th, 2022, uh, with the conditions that the time of year restriction relative to construction of the dock, uh, no work on the dock uh, from uh, April, May, and June, uh, and that daily inspections while work is going on, whether it be Phragmites or, or eradication or construction of the dock, the daily inspections for any kind of wildlife impact, nesting impact, or anything along those lines. 
be conducted so that we don't have any uh, unintended consequences. I'll entertain that motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made supported. Any further discussion on the motion? And on all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Um, Keith Mello. Aye. aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Margaret French. Back to aye. Margaret. Kevin. De ah, thank you, Margaret. Margaret French says aye. Kevin Demaris. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Now, okay. Steve, you can thank us. Now I can leave. Thank you very much. Good night. Now. Thank you, sir. You also have a good night. You too. Uh, okay. Um, Victoria, are you back with us? Yes, I'm here. Is Mike uh, Mike McHugh on board? Um, I don't see him on here, but let me just. Okay, I've asked to I've asked Mike to come as the open space consultant to speak about his memo and the warrant articles for 2022. I have to go into a Board of Health meeting. So I'm hoping that Mike is here and that I can just leave you. Charlie, I think I, I, I trust as the new vice chairman and all. Uh, so that was supposed to be on this agenda. Oh, Victoria, I messed up. Well, it, is, sure it is on this agenda. No. To vote to uh, appoint oh uh, oh a, I'm a vice chairman a chairman reorganization of the board no we'll just do it on the next one that's fine okay sorry but I trust Charlie's experience that he can manage to get through this meeting right Charlie I think I can yeah especially since this, this end of it yeah <laughs> let me uh, let me give Mike a quick test here oh he's he's on oh perfect Mike thank you very much for joining all right, folks, I got to go inside. I'm sitting out in my car at the police station now. Let me go in and do my thing. Mike, I appreciate you coming on board and, and, and letting these people know and just tell them everything that you need to tell them. Uh, everybody, be safe. We'll see you around. Charlie, I've got your book. I might drop it off at your house tonight. If not, I'll swing by the house tomorrow. All right. No problem, Kevin. All right. Thank you. And thanks again, Margaret, for pointing that thing out on County Road. I appreciate that. Not a problem. All right. Thanks, Keith, for being here. We'll see you guys. Bye, Kevin. Bye. Mike, are you there? I am. All right. You have the floor. Uh, wonderful. There used On the website under the filings, there used to be a copy of the note that I sent and it's not there anymore, and I honestly do not remember what I sent you. Kevin asked me to come to talk about a note I sent you, but I don't remember what it was. I wish I could help you there, Mike. But, uh... it, it was about the Warren articles. Oh, okay. Um, I remember, I probably can't speak to this in great detail, but I remember enough of it that I can, uh, I can fluff my way through it. <clears throat> there were, I believe, two. Uh, Victoria, if I get anything wrong at any point, let me know. If if okay. you don't let me know, I'll blame it on you later. Um, sounds good. All right. Uh, I believe there were two. One, uh, both of them were before you last fall for the October meeting, but there were technical reasons why uh, neither of them were acted on at the time. One was, uh, and, and I, this one I believe you guys actually had some, some good discussion on last fall, was the fact that when people are taking land out of Chapter 61, 61A, or 61B, uh, they are paying a rollback tax, and that rollback tax currently is just going into the general fund. Um, there was discussion about was it uh, better for that money to go into the Conservation Commission's land fund, the fund that you 
can spend to maintain your properties or acquire more property if it's appropriate to do so. Uh, and there was some tentative interest in doing that, but at the time we discussed it in September or October or possibly August, the rollback taxes from the previous fiscal year had not actually been paid yet at that time, so there was no money to appropriate. Those taxes have uh, since been paid, so there is money that's been received for that purpose that is sitting in the town's general fund. Um, the uh, number, like 40-something thousand, is sticking out in my mind right now, but that may not have been last year's number. Um, and I apologize. I'm, I'm taking it kind of for granted that everybody here knows what those three programs are, 61, 61A, and 61B. I know Charlie does because I know uh, his property was in one of them at one time. Uh, is there anybody on the call who does not know what that is before I keep talking like you all do? I know what it is. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I can only see one person at a time, so I'm going to take that as everybody knows what it is. Um, uh, yeah, I think you saw this a little bit, uh, saw this purpose behind this a little bit with the most recent property that went through this process, and that was Ed Lowe's property, the George Williams Woodlot. Um, that was unusual because that was only a $40,000 sale, and you guys have about $96,000 in that account. So if that was something that had been viable for you to purchase, you, you could have just done it. But more often than not, uh, the purchase price on these properties are well over $100,000. And your land fund only increases as money is proactively put into it. So um, the discussion that had been a little bit in the fall I know I had it with Kevin, and I think I had it with all of you to a, a lesser extent, was um, we assess these rollback taxes in part as a punishment for developing land that people have promised not to develop, uh, which that's an overgeneralized way of saying it, but that's essentially what it is. And then we turn around and do nothing related to open space conservation with the money we get from doing that. So... Um, one of those articles was a proposal to start taking money that's realized from rollback taxes and dedicating it into this open space fund that the Conservation Commission has control over. There's no automatic way to do that. If that's something you guys were interested in doing, it would require once a year putting an article on a town meeting warrant to accomplish that. Um, I don't know. Uh, probably the easiest thing, if anybody has any questions or concerns about that one, uh, and then I'll move on to the second one afterward. Does anyone have any questions? Why does it have to go on every year, on the, on the warrant every year? There is, uh, if that's something you guys wanted to do, there's no automatic way to do it. So there are Certain sources of revenue, the town can take a vote once, and that revenue will automatically do something. So, you know, the town could vote once that they want any money we get from liquor licenses to be used for alcohol abuse education training at the elementary school. Uh, rollback taxes, the law that creates the Chapter 61 programs, specifically does not allow an automatic assignment of that revenue. So each time that you wanted to do this, it would have to be voted on again. And I used once a year just as a as an example. You, I mean, you could do it twice a year if it came up twice a year. You could do it once every couple of years. But um, because of all the solar development and most of the solar farms are going on property that was in one of those programs, we're realizing – at the current time, money at, a, at an annual rate because of that. Okay, gotcha. Okay, Mike. Um, so what would you want the, the commission to do, if anything, like tonight? Um, so 
if that is something that you guys want to pursue, the warrant articles were actually due last week. But I believe between I was out for about a week and a half, and I'm not sure that you guys met during that period. Or if you did, Kevin would, um, because of why I was out. So I'm sure that if you turned an article in at this point in time, they would most likely accept it, understanding the circumstances. So if that was something you guys wanted to do to um, seek to have that rollback tax revenue put into the land fund, uh, you would need to vote to submit that as an article. And then uh, I could walk Victoria through how to turn that article in. Or if you were not interested in doing that, then you would require no vote, and I would just move on to the second one. Can I ask a stupid question? Um, what happens to that money if we don't put it into the land fund? Uh, if you don't seek it yourselves, then it goes into the town's general fund as it currently does, and it's available for anybody to use for any purpose. So uh, the easiest answer would be if, if you did not seek to get it, then pick anything that happens at the town meeting in June that costs money and argue that the money went to that instead. All right. Um, so if we don't put it on the annual, we'll say we waited until a fall special town meeting, would the money likely still be there? I, I, in other words, I know that this money is going to go into free cash, but we'll say uh, there's forty thousand dollars right now that is there, just hypothetically, more than anything else. That that money could be spent, but the fact of the matter is, we could go and tell me if I'm wrong, Mike. Uh, that and ask in the fall for, we'll say $40,000 from free cash to fund the open space account. Am I correct? I believe you are correct. The, the only caveat I would throw in there is that roughly $40,000 is income from rollback taxes that were assessed in fiscal 21. Uh -huh. So right now, that's still the most recent year that was closed out. You you may find that if you make this argument in the fall, um, somebody may take the position, well, we already spent that money, uh, and in fiscal 22, we only assessed $8,000, and, and somebody may look to kind of shortchange you in that regard. All right. Uh, well, I just asked the other board members what their feelings are. Uh, I'm thinking that possibly we could get an article on the annual, and if it, we decide a little bit later that we don't want to fly with that, we can just, you know, uh, remove the article at town meeting or, you know, make some other action. How do the other members feel? How, how much fighting over this money do, do you think that there's going to be? Is, is this like something that is going to be hotly contested or we, we should push for this? Um, if, if this were 10 years ago, I think you'd have an awful lot of people fighting over it. But the, the town has been fortunate the last year or two to be in a good place. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure that you would see, you may see some people that are just not concerned about open space preservation that don't think there's a point to it, but I don't think you're going to see an argument that the money would be absolutely necessarily better spent somewhere else. And the money that goes into this, how long do we have to spend it? Um, it's indefinite. It sits there until you do something with it. Okay. I mean, I, I guess I think it's a good idea. I, I, I don't know. I think Mike. it's a good idea before it goes somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mike, just one question. Uh, the, the money would, though, to spend the money in the future, we would have to have a town meeting vote at that time, correct? 
Um, it would depend on what. So, for example, that account, you're allowed to both purchase land and maintain the property that you already have. Um uh, Actually, no, I'm, I'm mistaken. It would not require going to town meeting because um, for land maintenance, you can and already have just spend it as if it was part of your budget. There have been, um, when Porter Pasture, the parking area that's directly on Grant Dean Road, when that was constructed a few years ago, that was paid for out of the land fund, and, and that did not require any extra steps. Uh, the part I was going to say had to go to town meeting was to buy the land, but uh, you don't actually have to do that. As a conservation commission, you are empowered in concert with the selectmen to purchase land using that fund if you can afford it without going to town meeting. You would go to town meeting if you needed additional money. So if you wanted to buy a property that was $200,000 and you only had, say, $100,000 in that account, you would have to go to town meeting for the other hundred thousand dollars, but the the hundred thousand dollars you had already, you you would not need town meeting for. Yeah, I I would say my own opinion is to be let it fly. You know, <laughs> we can't say what the answer is going to be until we ask the question. So uh, I would uh, be in favor of putting an article on the uh, annual to uh, carry this out. I agree. I agree also. Then uh, why I'll make I... a... Oh, go ahead, Charlie. I, I don't know if you wanted me to make a motion or yeah, whatever. Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, try to put this on the warrant. I will second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Uh, signify by saying I roll call Keith Medeiros. <laughs> Keith, Keith Medeiros, Keith Mello. <laughs> I've been called worse, Charlie. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> <If I vote. laughs> so I'm an I. I'm an I. Yep. Uh, Margaret French. I. Charlie Sullivan. I. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Elsewhere is Mike. Um, yep. The the second one was, um, and this again, this was one that was discussed a little bit in the fall, but the timing of it didn't work out. And that was an update to the zoning map. The Conservation Commission, every probably like three or four years, makes a suggestion to the planning board on um, updating the zoning map by rezoning parcels that have been acquired for open space to the open space zone. And that's um, that's typically like a proactive warning, if you will, to potential developers that say this 100 acres over here is really not available to you to develop anymore. It might be zoned residential because it always was, but either the Conservation Commission has somehow acquired it or the DCR has purchased it or... Um, some, you know, for some other reason, it's now permanently protected open space. Um, and there were maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of, of eight to ten parcels that fell into that category. A few of them were pretty good-sized parcels. Um, so uh, that that was the other one. The other one was to, to look at that, and that was... Um, Oh, I wish I had the list in front of me. But there were several parcels that were acquired by the DCR or, in one instance, one that they are going to be purchasing before the end of the fiscal year, before June 30th. Um, one or two that the Conservation Commission has acquired, those were some of the old tax title properties that um, town meeting voted to give to you guys rather than to sell um, I believe one that was on there was acquired by the Fall River Water Department. Um, so it's nothing, um, nothing drastic. It's nothing that that would really affect the zoning of anybody's home or business or or any property that's being actively used. It's property that's 
um, quite the opposite, never going to be actively used other than for for passive recreation or whatnot. Um, there's no uh, there's no detriment to not doing it if that one, if you wanted to wait until the fall or whatnot, uh, it's not like anybody can develop them. So nothing, this isn't, um, you're not preventing something from happening by doing this. You're, you're just sort of putting people on notice when they look at the zoning map that uh, they don't bother to look at those parcels because they're not available to them. So that's uh, that's that's a good one to do, but there's no sort of pressing need to do it right away if you prefer to wait until the fall. Mike, in all in all honesty, it's basically a bookkeeping or record keeping article, nothing more. That's correct. Personally, I don't think it's anything that we shouldn't uh, try to go forward with. At, at the annual town meeting. If they want to knock it off because there's too many articles or something, we'll accept that. But uh, I don't see any reason why we can't just do that for bookkeeping purposes. Anyone else have a question or a comment? No, no, I agree. I, just like Mike said before, if it's too late to put them on the warrant, then we could just do it in the fall. But if we right. can't put it on, we might as well, like you said, Charlie. Okay. All right, I'll accept the motion to uh, put that article or try to put that article in the annual town meeting, if that's what. So moved. I'll second. Made and seconding. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Keith Mello. Aye. Mike French. Aye. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Uh, motion passes unanimously. We all set now, Mike. Yep, that's all for me. Um, thanks for bearing with me. I was I would have liked to have been more prepared, but I actually got home about five minutes before I called you guys. So I I was really caught off guard. But um, I will sit with Victoria tomorrow and go over how to do some of this stuff, particularly the zoning one, because she gets to do both sides of that now. All right. And uh, Mike, uh, my condolences on the passing of your father. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Same, same, Mike. Sorry for your loss. Thanks. I appreciate it. Have a good evening, Mike. Thanks, you too. Okay, Victoria, the motion to uh, adjourn would be inappropriate, correct? <laughs> yes, it would. All right. I'll make it. <laughs> I'll made, second. Motion made seconded. Uh, all in favor, Keith Fellow. Aye. Margaret French. Aye. Sally Sullivan. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. All right. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night, guys. Thank you. You Take too. Care.